going on, planet? I am sitting in a chair. What about you? I uh, had a question. Um, can you explain um, in evolution why the change of uh, species is not happening anymore, or is it happening? Uh, we've seen new species appear basically in front of our eyes, like the the uh, what's it called the wait, what did they call it? Its nickname is the Big Bird lineage, but it's a it's a type of ground finch on Daphne Major. I can't remember the exact species name, but Peter and Rosemary Grant just like literally saw it happen right before their eyes. Uh, bacterial transformations are radical, radical. They're, we don't have a very good definition for species for bacteria because of how simple they are. But you can you can transform one bacteria basically into another. It's like injecting cow blood into you and then you start and then and then you get titties or something like that it's what you can do with bacterial transformations are pretty crazy um we uh so i mean those are some examples some hybridizations in plants uh have been documented as well i could probably get you a few others but we'll just start with that that's when I'm agnostic towards evolution. I'm a Christian, I'm, but I'm agnostic towards that. But the only reason why I'm hesitant to, um, you know, but start believing in it more is because of that. Um, so, what can you tell me why the the change in species uh, changed as to before, where the species would change, I would say, more drastically or faster? Because uh, I know it takes millions of years for genes to uh, to evolve, correct? Uh, no, not not necessarily. I mean, okay. for some genes, they they literally evolve just right before uh, in a, in a generation. It's just that those events are rare events. So it kind of based on what you're saying earlier and what you're saying now, it kind of seems like you're doing the whole thing where it's like, well, why did evolution, if it used to happen, how come it's not happening anymore or how come it stopped or slowed down or whatever? Is that accurate? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, I don't really know why people say this because evolution clearly hasn't stopped at all. Um, it is generally a process that, do, like dramatic changes, uh, do generally take quite a long time. Um, so like, for example, if we look right here, these are brontotheres, and you can find them in the... I can't zoom in on this. Seriously, every time I click, it highlights something. That's really annoying. Um, I, can't, I can't really zoom in on this, unfortunately, but um, these brontotheres, you find them like in the Badlands in South Dakota. And so these bottom species here, um, it's too small for me to read too, but the time period... Uh, it goes back to about 52 million years, and then the more modern ones are closer to 37, 36, 35 million years. So a period of about 20 million years is represented there. Uh, in order to get really dramatic changes like that, yeah, you need you need a quite a long period of time. There's 20 million years just for that. Um, so. Yeah, you wouldn't. We wouldn't expect to see that, you know, right, right before our eyes. It's uh, pretty unreasonable. So, would you say, like, in about thirty million years from now, do you think the human species will evolve, or will we still be around? Um. So probably the more like the more accurate way to frame that that's in line with evolution would be. If you time traveled to 30 million years in the future, would you be able to reproduce with humans? Because um, that, like, if there are two different species, they generally either can't reproduce or don't for behavior reasons. 30, I mean, 30 million years is, is such an incredibly long time. Um, it's really hard to say. I'm tempted to say no, but for a completely different... Like I could be talked into yes or no for two completely different reasons. One of the reasons is we really actually aren't under the under natural selection anymore. It it doesn't really make a difference. We can um 
you know, being diabetic was a death sentence not very long ago. Today, it's not right. We can we can basically keep ourselves alive. So the thing with evolution is if the environment doesn't change, then there isn't really selective pressure. And so the organism doesn't really need to change very much. So organisms can remain stable for very long periods of time. And while obviously our technology will grow, um, our ability to live and reproduce will really not be significantly threatened. So it's very hard for me to imagine what would actually cause such dramatic genetic changes that we will actually change that much over time. However, um, it might be the case that we modify our genes to the point where a human of today, if they teleported, and with the rate of technology, we don't have to say 30 million years. We can just say, I mean, shit, a thousand years into the future. Um, I could see that there possibly being a reproductive barrier for that reason. I don't really know what it would look like or what it would be, but that's, but that's like, it could be the case that we, we find out how to eliminate so many recessive alleles that what it actually does is we actually take out significant chunks of our genome, like mega base pair deletions, a few millions at a time. And then we like wouldn't be genetically compatible with ourselves in the future. But I think we would, all that being said, I think we would probably be indistinguishable like on the surface from ourselves uh, today. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I learned a lot. Thank you, man. You're welcome. I think if we go a thousand years in the future, it's going to be, uh, you know, like if we keep making advances with like CRISPR and all that stuff, it's going to be like character customization by the time we get there. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Yeah. The, the build a baby stuff. Yeah. Some <laughs> of that, some of that creeps me out. Some of that, I'm not really sure. <laughs> It depends on where you take the implications of it. If you're helping just so people don't have like life altering diseases and stuff, wonderful. It's like if you start pushing into straight up like hardcore eugenics, well, that's bad. That's very bad. Yeah, there are some people that say something like, well, getting rid of Huntington's is eugenics. And it's like, well, no, but. I guess, <laughs> but, but also it's no. one of those things where it's like, uh, the technology isn't inherently bad. It's how it's used. Like we can use, uh, you know, splitting an atom. We can use that to destroy a city or power a city, right? It just depends yeah. on whose hands it's in. Yeah. And you don't need G you don't need CRISPR for it. I mean, you know, like Iceland, they openly brag. Oh yeah. Down syndrome doesn't exist in our country anymore. And it's like, well, why is that? And it's like, well, because we have early screening and everybody that has a Down syndrome child gets an abortion. It's like, okay, well, that's um, actually horrible. And I'm a, totally a pro-choice person. <laughs> yeah, it's like, geez. Um, it's like, that is why you're doing it? That seems like a holy shit. Yeah, you, uh, um, uh, it, it's the every day we stray further from God meme. Uh, but I'm an atheist, you know, so. Don't let chat, what is it doing, happen to you. I've taken 100 of the most common anti-scientific arguments and put together the research, the logic, and the facts to take them all down. Every copy is personally signed and shipped by me. There are also way over 100 additional misconceptions in my second book, Facts That Aren't True. Or if you prefer, there are full audio versions of both books, including all of the pictures used in the books. If you're interested, Click the link in the description. This video and all my videos is on my Patreon ad free and you can get a free copy of my first book by being a member too. Plus your name will appear in the end credits. Thank you.